Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the upgrade of my very first turbine that I ever had, the Triangle. All right guys, if this is your first time finding my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Also give the video a thumbs up, it helps to support the channel. And uh, let's get into the second build video of the Triangle where we are going to wrap up everything. We're still waiting on the turbine, but uh, let's get into it. All right, guys, so I've been struggling a little bit with how we're going to set the tank up. So, had this round tank that uh, I was planning on putting here, but it would not provide enough clearance with the canopy that goes on there. So I could get enough clearance on the front portion, but the back portion, because the, the canopy kind of angles down, wouldn't fit. So that one was out of the question. Had this tank, which would probably fit here, but it's only eight ounces. So we're only adding 250 milliliters, which isn't a whole lot when it's a 1200 milliliter tank. I'd like to get more out of this. So ideally I didn't want to use this. Bought this tank thinking I could make it fit because it's not a whole bunch bigger than this one, but it's almost the same depth as the round one. A little bit shorter so I think this one would fit here but it doesn't fit because the uh, the angles here butt into the uh, the canopy I think it would fit I haven't actually really fully tried but I was thinking to myself how can I make this better so on the underside of the plane I never put them on there but we've got a couple marks right here in uh, Sharpie so I'm assuming that's probably the CG of the plane um, where the previous owners have had it, which kind of makes sense. So we add this tank here that adds more initial weight that makes it nose heavy. So yesterday I had a bit of an epiphany. I was standing out here in the garage for a while, just wondering, and then I thought, well, maybe I can stick the tank down in between there where the air tanks used to be. And I was thinking, well, that's fine, but we're getting rid of the center spar. And then I thought, well, if I put the tank in there and use some can foam, so this is this is kind of a, a commercial applicator, but uh, you can get the canisters from hardware stores. So if I can use some can foam and put that in there, then this tank now becomes part of the structure because it's going to kind of glue it in place. Um, I, we could eventually take this out if we need to, but I think that is my best option. And I think it's going to just fit in there. It's just going to clear. So I'm going to pull all this, uh, this it's just ball, uh, balsa in there anyways, but I'm going to pull that out and uh, see if we can get that tank in there. All right, guys, works absolutely super. Herb. So I got rid of all the center uh, balsa piece there. Um, I did have to squish the tank a little bit, so I heated it up with my heat gun. And then all I did was uh, put a piece of carbon and this uh, plywood plate stuff in the vise. Stuck that and just uh, squished it down with the vise until it was uh, where I wanted it. Left it uh, for about 10 minutes to uh, cool off and now it fits beautifully. So I did add the little cutout here because the other tank butts right into the uh, the end of this. And uh, now we've got uh, enough space for the fuel lines to come out. So that is absolutely awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plumb this tank. Uh, just get the uh, plumbing and stuff done in there. All right, guys, we are ready to install the tank. Uh, I'm going to use this Hilti foam. Uh, it's just low expansion can foam. As I've mentioned, and I'm just going to put some in beside the tank here. Uh, yes, the servo lines will be uh, glued in place. Uh, I'm not going to put tons in there just because I want it to uh, to hold the tank and uh, kind of provide some structural support. Um, if we were to fill up that area, there's a chance that it might expand and actually push the body out. But uh, we're just going to put a little... Um, doll up on each side so i'll show you guys the uh, final product once it's cured all right guys so that's what it looks like before it's cured i just sprayed it so we're going to get some expansion out of that and when it's uh when it's done we can just cut it off and uh so some people might not think that that's a great idea 
Um, the primary reason I'm doing it is because we got rid of that center spar, right? So I still want some contact between the top and the bottom. It's going to add some structure there. It's going to glue that tank in place, which is going to provide some structure. I mean, it was just a thin piece of, uh, of balsa, so not overly worried about it. Um, you know, the wires, yes, they are going to be stuck or glued into place we could always find a different path if we needed to and then if we ever need to uh, do anything with the tank we still have access to the uh the tank cap and everything so that should work good i believe and uh, when that's cured next step um, is we are going to separate the fuselage pieces and uh, do our touch-ups uh, we also, a little update for you, the owner decided not to switch to Caro Start just because it was too much money for uh, a budget plane like this. So we're going to keep the uh, keep the valve in place, which is uh, just fine. So that's how things are progressing. All right, guys, the foam is all cured there. Uh, worked out nicely when I uh, run my hand along the bottom and the top. There's... Uh, very very little movement if any there so uh, that actually worked out just like i was hoping it would and then all we need to do is just cut the foam off and works good so with that done we're going to separate the fuselage pieces and work on getting the covering touched up Alrighty, so front gear is all installed guys. Um, I had to do some sanding on the, uh, the mounting blocks as I've mentioned previously. Now the previous holes were here and here. Um, so we're actually mounted, we're mounted uh, in the middle just like the previous gear. But uh, yeah, basically everything kind of worked out the same. I did have to open up the back part here because this... Um, this trunnion sticks out further than the previous trunnion and stuff. Just the geometry of the gear, which is totally normal. Um, now, one of the nice things is this leg is actually straight up and down now. Um, previously, it kind of angled forward. Um, probably not going to notice it on this plane, but uh, anyways, that's, uh, that's changed a little bit. But the steering mechanism is way more solid now. And uh, basically, regardless of if this leg is retracted or not, um, the arms always have tension on them. So the, uh, the steering mechanism's always, always got tension. Uh, we added quite a bit of Expo to the center. Now the reason for the Expo is the gear mechanism works by that pin slotting in there. Okay, so, you know, if we do happen to be putting our gear down and adding some rudder or steering we want to make sure that uh, we're not super aggressive in the middle so it doesn't knock that pin out but uh, with this plane with there not being any rudders you're really not on the on the gear at all so um, or the rudders at all so anyways guys that worked out really well um, have lots of steering it's nice and solid so that uh, that's quite impressive and you can see there how uh, how solid it is the leg has like almost zero movement for this old gear is uh, is awesome so that's good now we're going to do the covering fixes uh so just basically putting the white on the back section here uh fixing up some of the orange so i'll do that next all right guys so the uh, nose section has been reattached to the fuselage um, the silver striping here, that's actually to cover the joint in the uh, the covering that was there before, but I put new silver stripes on. And uh, the whole rear section um, from here back is all new covering. And then we just put a little patch over top of the orange on the bottom. So that is done. Now basically we are at the uh, reassembly point. So uh, next thing I'm going to do is work on the plumbing. Uh, so that involves putting the main tank in its place, and then we just have to figure out the actual plumbing of the uh, the new fuel system. So I'll go through that uh, once I get this tank in place and kind of just show you the uh, the way to do that, I guess the theory behind it. It's pretty straightforward, so if you've done it before, skip ahead a little bit, but uh, that's what's going to be next. All right, guys, um, we got a fair bit to get done. It's a Thursday night right now, and we're going flying tomorrow, and the triangle needs to be completed. So we need to get our butts in gear, but there's not a ton, well, I always say that, but there's not a ton to do left. 
But we did get the turbine back today from Turbine Solutions over in the UK, which is great. We weren't actually expecting it back today, but DHL uh, came through and we got it. So let's open this thing up and uh, check it out. Okay, so there's the engine. Um, got all of our parts back. And uh, we were concerned because half of the engine mount was still here with us and half went with the turbine. So there is an extra uh, brand new mount in there, which is great. We're probably going to use the blue one just because it looks cool. Okay, so we've got uh, we've got to replumb the tanks. What I'm probably going to do just because I have it is get that engine mounted so that's back on and then we can work about uh, work in all the wiring and, and plumbing and all that kind of stuff as we get into this section. So I'm going to do that first, bolt that engine down. Should be a fairly straightforward process. We're just undoing what we did before and then we'll start to work on the plumbing, wiring and all that. All right, guys, engine is mounted. Um... <clears throat> so I ended up using the blue mounts and the reason I actually use the blue mounts is the old green mounts are actually stretched out so they would have worked but we would have had to put uh, um, like pop cans or some sort of shim in there so these are actually garbage um, so we're just going to toss these out or I might throw them in my parts bin just for material but uh, that's why we had to use the blue ones which was fine uh, the spacing on the blue ones it was a little bit different there, so I had to redrill the back holes, which worked out good. So anyways, turbines mounted, um, pretty straightforward. It went back on exactly how we took it off. Blue mount does look better. Anyways, there's a screenshot for you or a shot. So we're gonna put the, uh, the tanks in, work on plumbing. Um, when I go through the plumbing, I will explain to you the way that I remember this and how I think about it. So um, I'll get that stuff organized, then I'll uh, I'll run through it with you. All right, guys. So there's the bung taken out of the tank and the clunk line and everything. Uh, this line's a little bit short and uh, it's quite old, um, but it's uh, still flexible Tigon. That's a good reason to use the actual Tigon brand of tubing. But um, so we're going to change this uh, this clunk line out, and we're also going to put a felt clunk on the end, so we we suck every last drop out of this tank. Um, so we're going to do that and get the tank back together. All right, guys. So I'll go through this fuel plumbing with you, just so you have an idea of uh, maybe if if you haven't come across this before. So with UATs, you've got typically well three lines basically going into UAT. So you've got your fuel line which is going to um, feed the fuel pump okay so that's usually this if it's a normal uat it's usually the one coming off the cap or the center okay so that's where your filters on the other side or your bubble bubble filter whatever you want to call it and then you've got a fill line okay and then you've got another line which is going to feed your rest of your plumbing system so when i'm setting up a plumbing system i want to have a plan in place um, to know which tank is first and last now in a two in a, in a single tank setup with a uat it's quite simple but when we've added this uh, additional tank in here what i want to happen is i want to fill up the uat or l let me let me rephrase this a different way when we're flying the plane i want the main tank the previous main tank the biggest tank to empty first and then i want the smaller tank that i've added to be my second tank Okay, so this tank's going to pretty much be full all the time. Uh, we'll see how, mu how much of the runtime we can extend, but we want to pull all the fuel out of this tank. So when I'm doing my plumbing setup, I just want to go backwards. Okay, so I'm going to put fuel in this line in the UAT. It's going to come out of this line. And because we want this tank to drain last, we're going to go in the fuel line, in the clunk line of this tank, out the vent in the fuel line of this tank and then out the vent right here to the fuselage. Now the reason you're going in the fuel line is because when we're pulling from this tank, we're pulling from the fuel line, okay? So same with this one, we're pulling from the fuel line and it's going into this tank here, okay? So hopefully that makes sense to you. If you do have any questions, list them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. I'm just going to uh, lay all this plumbing up and then I'll show you guys the finished product and uh, that'll allow us to progress. All right guys, so I actually changed my mind as soon as I started on this and the reason I changed my mind is because we put that felt clunk 
in the main tank and we have a regular clunk in the uh, tank we added. So the way this works is we fill up with fuel here. The fuel goes to the fuel line or clunk line out the vent to the fuel line clunk line of the last tank and then the vent comes out and goes to the fuselage. So when we're flying this, this tank's gonna drain first, this tank's gonna drain second, so now we're using this fuel first. Uh, we've got the felt clunk in there to, uh, to make sure we pull all the fuel out of that tank. We're not gonna run this tank dry though, but that will help, and uh, so that's good. Um, one thing I forgot to mention to you is we were obviously looking at all the weights for this. So that extra tank we added in there only added 72 grams, which is pretty good. That was for all the, the extra pieces and everything. So that's where we're at right now for weights. So we don't have a ton of weight added to this plane. Um, next thing we're going to do now that the plumbing's done is we're going to start putting the, uh, the stuff back in the plane. So previously the receiver was right here. I think we're going to keep the receiver there. Um, it's a nice balance between the front and the back. We'll have to see where the new uh, landing gear controller is going to fit best. Um, so we've got a couple things to figure out here. But that's what we're working on. All right, guys, so I think we pretty much have everything kind of laid out to where, uh, where, where we need it to be. Uh, everything's put back basically to sort of where it was. Uh, the only thing we're adding is the, uh, the gear controller here. We've kind of split the uh, position just so it's kind of up front because we have the, uh, the lead coming from the front uh, that we need to plug in. So that's as far back as I can put it, and that actually works out good. Um, now we do have to make a custom wiring harness. So we've got the power for the gear, the power for the turbine, which is going to plug into this uh, single um, lipo here, the 2000 milliamp lipo. So that's going to power the turbine and the gear, which is good. Uh, as I had previously, we had this turnigy battery, which is quite puffy. So just as a pre preventative thing, we're going to change that out. So just wanted to give you guys an update here as to what things are looking like. So basically it's just cleaning up the wiring. Uh, the biggest task left is making the, uh, the custom harness here and uh, that's it. All right guys, she is all finished on the install. So I think the wiring has cleaned up a pretty substantial amount. Um, all of this foam here used to be used in the plane and uh, it's not used anymore. Well, things are just, are just a lot more cleaner and organized. We have two pieces of foam there just kind of holding the wires in and holding the tank in. But uh, everything else is, uh, is good to go. One connection here for the uh, turbine battery and uh, retract battery. Now I haven't gooped anything yet because I want to make sure that everything runs. And uh, that's it. So I think everything's good. Next thing we have to do is learn the turbine to the radio, which uh, we will do now. And uh, after that, we will do an engine run. All right, guys, so we are all hooked up and ready to go. Uh, gas is hooked up, data terminals hooked up, fuel, we filled the first tank, put some in the second tank just to check for leaks, and that's all good. Um, so we are ready to go.
All right, guys. Well, the trusty triangle is complete. She may not be pretty. She's kind of like the ugly duckling, but she's done. All right, so effectively, I'll show you guys the weight tally in a second. So ultimately, when it's all said and done, we added 54 grams with all the changes. So our servo was added a little bit. The uh, switch to the electron gear actually reduced and uh, the extra tank added a little bit. Now, of course, we're going to be carrying a little bit more fuel, but uh, the plane won't notice that. So ultimately, there's almost a net zero change with the upgrade, which is absolutely awesome. Just what I was going for, and uh, the plane should fly way more accurate with those new servos and uh, engines all serviced, so it should be a joy to fly again. We're gonna be flying this thing tomorrow. Um, I don't know if we're gonna get any video of it. Maybe we'll get a maiden video or a remaiden video of it. But uh, yeah, she should be a treat to fly again and uh, a little bit more flight time, which is good. Previously, it had, I think, five minutes and 30 seconds on the timer and uh, we're gonna bump that up to six minutes, 30 seconds see how we're doing with the fuel, and maybe we'll go up to seven minutes. Um, we'll see. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the, uh, the triangle video. Uh, if you didn't watch the first one, I'll post a link above here. Uh, this was my very first jet that I started with uh, into turbine aircraft, so it's uh, definitely got a soft spot in my heart. Uh, it's tons of fun to fly, and... Um, Anyways, check that video out if you haven't seen the first one. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching the video. If this is your first time finding my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below, right down there. And uh, give the video a thumbs up, please. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, I'd uh, love to hear them. If you guys have any video ideas, anything you want to see in future videos, either shoot me an email or list them down below. So thanks, guys, for tuning in. We will see you in the next video. Bye.